If you have watched Euphoria or seen videos about it, you might have noticed that there is a lot of references to popular culture in the series. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. With Drake and Film Studio A24 being co-producers, you would expect a few Drake songs here and there, combined with some nice visuals. But Euphoria was like, nah man, let's take it to a whole new level. For example, in their choice of music by mixing songs from contemporary hip hop artists with other genres. And on top of that, in the use of visual references to movies, music videos and popular series. That's why I wanted to have a closer look to see how Euphoria is referring to these forms of popular culture and to find out what exactly their meaning is. So now let's get into it. Oftentimes I hear people talking about how Euphoria is just copying all these movies and leeching of their success. But is Euphoria actually copying all these elements? In short, maybe yes. But here's the thing, there's a distinct difference between copying and stealing. Let me explain. You might know the famous quote by painter Pablo Picasso who said lesser artists borrow and great artists steal. What he meant by this is that a bad artist just takes something without changing it at all and pretend like it's theirs. A great artist, however, takes something, changes things here and there and perhaps puts it in a different context and tries to make something better and above all, something unique. So how is Euphoria actually doing this? Let's have a look at a couple things that are pretty cool in my opinion. First off, the soundtrack, which is kind of fire. The soundtrack features songs and samples from so many different artists like Billie Eilish, Drake, The Migos, J.I.D., Doja Cat, you name it and it's probably on there. These modern songs are then mixed with classical music or even some Frank Sinatra. This is very similar to how the movie Waves used music by Frank Ocean and Tame Impala to combine sounds from different genres. The cameraman of Waves also worked on Euphoria and the movie is starring Alexa Demi in another toxic relationship. Fuck you! The artist that created the iconic sound of Euphoria, however, is called Labyrinth. His voice is running like a thread through the entire series. Some of these songs are even becoming character specific, like the Nate growing up sound. Every time you hear that sound, it symbolizes that Nate is about to show his ass up to the party. The titles of the songs oftentimes also match the feelings and thoughts of these characters at a certain moment. Like the song Still Don't Know My Name, referring to both unrequited love and these characters searching for the true versions of themselves. In this way, the music is sort of becoming part of the characters, which is pretty relatable, I think. On a visual level, Euphoria is doing this in a similar way, because the most ingenious aspect of the show besides the music is definitely the cinematography. You could take a single shot out of the show and almost immediately recognize its Euphoria because of the colors, the camera movement, the setting and clothing, or no clothing at all. And it's those recognizable elements that Euphoria loves to play with. There are so many movies, series, TV shows and music videos out there on the internet that are available to everybody. Euphoria takes those memorable elements of her popular culture because they know that it is something that the audience will recognize and have associations with. And because of that, they are not only copying those elements but also altering them in a way that fits the story. Take the famous mirror shot from the French movie La Haine for example. The scene where Nate Jacobs is growing up, we see a young boy being fueled by hatred, turning into an absolute beast. <laughs> which not only relates to the movie La Haine visually, but also thematically, because La Haine literally means the hate. And one of the most powerful takeaways of the movie is that hate attracts hate, which is exactly what the character of Nate is portraying. Right from the beginning of the first episode, the tone and cinematic rules of the story are being lined out. In order to familiarize the viewer with the dreamy world we're stepping into, we are seeing the elements that we can expect to encounter more of in later episodes, like the slow motion sequences or flashbacks and the free flowing camera movements. In some cases, it is almost as if the camera becomes a person of its own. In this interview, director Sam Levinson explains why. I wanted to kind of bring in a little bit of this, this other world. When Rue gets really high, she's able to kind of enter this place you know, sort of between life and death, where she can reunite with her father. The way of using a camera as some sort of a ghost was also explored by director Gaspar Noé in the movie Enter the Void, where he goes into themes such as drug use, life, death, and the afterlife. Another remarkable thing is the use of color. Lighting and color are used as a way of portraying emotional states of characters. Sam Levinson and cameraman Marcel Rev established a color system quite early on, so that it's not all just sunshine and rainbows, literally. They mostly use primary colors blue, yellow and red as their basis, but the most notable color of the show is purple. Red is often used in situations of danger, 
but also when feeling passion, warmth, or other strong feelings, while blue is representing anxious feelings, or more so the stillness and lack of feeling. This constant fluctuation of color and emotion is especially symbolized by the opening shot of Rue and the various hues of red, blue, and purple on her face. This use of color also seems to be inspired by the Neon Demon, which is a horror movie about an aspiring model's journey in the dark corners of the fashion industry. Euphoria takes this concept and applies it to teenagers in high school. Because when you're young, emotions are fleeting and can change on a dime, especially when under the influence of drugs. The third aspect I wanted to talk about are the storyline and themes, because the way the story is told in Euphoria is oftentimes like a so-called stream of consciousness, where the audience is reading the minds of these characters by jumping from one event to the other. Every episode dives deeper in the lives and relationships of these characters, which are starting to intertwine with each other as the story progresses. Especially in the storyline of Rue, we get to experience the complexity of the mind. Because she is addicted to drugs, her memories begin to blend with each other, creating this hallucinatory form of storytelling, where you see all these memories flash by while she is talking about them in a voiceover. The scene at the party in episode 1, where she's walking through the hallway while being high, is a reference to the movie Inception, a movie about exploring alternate realities in a dream within a dream, within yet another dream. Besides the comparison between the character of Nate and the story of La Anne mentioned earlier, there are two references which I think are very interesting thematically. The first one is a comparison between Cassie and perhaps the main character of Danny in Midsummer while she is having a panic attack, and also the character of Ophelia in Shakespeare's Hamlet play, where she ends up in a state of madness due to Hamlet's actions. What the fuck is wrong with you? Okay. This also coincides with the meaning of the flowers, because in Midsummer, flowers symbolize life and death. In these scenes, Cassie and Danny no longer sacrifice themselves for the love of others, but instead embrace a newfound love and finally start to flourish by accepting themselves. A portrait like this was also inspired by the aesthetic of Mexican murals like this one. Another reference seems to be the relationship between Rue and Jules, that so far kind of resembles the story of Romeo and Juliet. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. You're full of shit. No way! You're full of shit. All these references are being used to show the character's situations and relationships in a metaphorical way. Or to low-key make fun of them, like the Game of Thrones reference to Kat's relationship fantasies. Euphoria is not the only one that is doing this, because another great series that is king at referencing pop culture is of course, is yeah boy, Spongebob. Oh. Much like in The Simpsons and South Park, so you must be talking to me. SpongeBob knows how to reference pop culture. Look at this reference to Tarantino's movie Kill Bill, for example, or David Hasselhoff from Baywatch in the SpongeBob movie. So where's your boat? Boat. <laughs> this process of paying homage or referring to elements of other works is called, with a fancy word, intertextuality. In season two of Euphoria, they even reference various pieces of art. So after all, some might still argue that Euphoria is an unrealistic and glorifying portrayal of teenage lives. Well, if you've watched the show, you know for certain it's not glorifying drug abuse, because some scenes are messed up and pretty heartbreaking. You did this to me! The creator of Euphoria was a recovering addict himself too, so it's clear his goal isn't glorification. But yes, I agree, in some aspects the show is unrealistic. It's certainly not like my high school times. The lighting is definitely not like this in high school dorms or guys sitting around shirtless with each other. But sometimes, instead of trying to mimic reality, imagination and fiction are better at conveying certain emotions and the feeling of the real than realism itself. Isn't that why we love fiction and movies at the end of the day? With reality, you can only go so far, but as soon as you tap into fiction, you can explore way more than reality could ever do. I couldn't cover all the references in Euphoria because there are so many of them. So if you want to add anything or have cool theories, please write them down in the comments so other people and I can read them. And if you like this video and want more content like this, please hit the like button and subscribe. Also check out my playlist with short facts about movies and series. And I hope to see you in the next video.